if you are hard to guard without the ball and you are positioning yourself without the ball to be hard to guard, you will be making you and your teammates better, period. What is the optimal way to train? You have to really look at what are you trying to achieve, right? What are the goals? And then you take that goal and you reverse engineer it. So it's like, say you wanted to get from here to the pizza shop down the street. First, you got to know where you want to go. All right, you want to go to the pizza shop down the street. Then you have to look at all the barriers between you and the pizza shop down the street. Got to open this door, right? I got to go walk down the stairs without falling down the stairs. I got to open the door downstairs. I got to walk up the street. And you don't have to like go so crazy on all the individual processes and get super specific because if you have a very clear idea of where you want to go and where you currently are, you'll get there as long as your intent is right, you'll get there. You start with what is the vision? Where do you want to go? And where are you currently at? Once you have a clear idea of that, then you start breaking down barriers. So for basketball players, a lot of times a barrier could be how they move, right? And then why wouldn't you move the correct way? What are the things that you're avoiding, the types of training, the types of actions, the types of people that you need to be around, um, all of that to become a better mover, to become somebody that's capable of moving like somebody that would play at the level that they wanna play at. If you wanted to train in a way that allowed you to play in college, you would have to look at, all right, this is where you currently are. This is the version of yourself that you believe is going to be somebody capable of playing in college. How are you not moving in a way that resembles that person? Okay, now what are the things that you need to do to be somebody that resembles that person? So it's like reverse engineering backwards. You look at the last thing and then you say, these are all the steps, the micro steps that I need to do to make it absolutely unreasonable to not get to that goal. And that's what we think about. So for movement, a lot of players, they can't get their shins to the ground before they step. They don't have the strength in their foot, ankle, knee, and hip to handle those positions. So what do we do? We do things that make it really weird for them not to have the strength in those areas. So strength training, very simply. Strength training to failure, two to three times per week, max effort, every single, every single set. And then we're doing things on the court that put them in the specific positions that help them to just transfer that strength over to it. It's not very complicated. People just need to look at where they want to go, where they're currently at, and be truthful with that. Do you think a lot of players that you train actually know what their vision is, like what they want to do with basketball? No, I don't think they do. I think that most people are in a place where they're just playing and surviving as they play, and they're not playing with the intention, with the focus of trying to get somewhere. I think the best players that I see come in the gym, they're locked into this is who I am and this is who I'm going to become and they're focused on a goal. Everyone else is scared out of their minds when they're playing. That's just pretty much the dichotomy of it. It's you're either super focused on what you're trying to do, how you're trying to dominate, how you're trying to impact the game in the short term and long term, within the moment, within the day, within a practice, within a training session and within your career or you're super nervous, scared, fearful in a training session and throughout your whole career that you just don't, you don't have the clear focus. I think the best players have focus with exactly what they're trying to achieve and they and that's all that they're thinking about. And everything else is understood by them as a distraction. And when I say understood by them, it's maybe not something that they're thinking about, but it's like they do things, they do the behaviors that they need to do to get to where they wanna go despite the distractions that come up. They don't feed into distractions. Good players don't talk about confidence. They never talk about confidence. They are just so focused on the goal that confidence doesn't have to be a problem. Is AAU worth it for those players? When is it like a, yeah, you should play AAU or their off season spent more on AAU than it is on training? It depends on the person that is in the situation if you're somebody that never has access to competition or other people around you like you're from arkansas and maybe aau where you can know for 100 percent certainty that you're going to be around other basketball players for a certain amount of time that you don't get all year round i don't know that could be useful on the flip side if you're somebody that lives in a highly populated area where you can play against good competition and you have the connects to get in front of people that actually know how to play then maybe it's not worth it to play six games every weekend in AAU where you're not going to be getting an insane amount of minutes. I think the thing that people lack the most in their training is ways to creatively create situations that they're going to come up with in their games and not just play one on one against somebody. One on one is good. One on one is easy to set up. If you can really have the vision to see 
what are the situations you're actually facing in games that you're actually struggling struggling with and then replicate those situations in your training against somebody that's going to push you it doesn't even have to be somebody that's better than you because you can manipulate the task in your own right to make it inherently more challenging for you to complete it so here's i'll give you an example say you have a difficulty playing off a closeout right? So you can start off a drill with a defender at the free throw line, you're at the top of the key, and they initiate the drill by throwing you the ball. Right when they throw you the ball, they just have to touch the three-point line, and then it's live play to a pull-up outside the paint or live play to the rim, whatever you want. But say that that defender is not as good as you, not as talented as you, and you could just easily get by them, easily score, easily get what you want. You're not really getting that much better in that situation, but you could still get better against them if you use a heavy ball and they're using a regular ball. If you have to hold a cone in your hand, in one of your hands the entire time while you play, if there's a third person that's gonna guard you under the rim, you can manipulate the task, the environment, and yourself in different ways to make things inherently more challenging and still make them specific to what you wanna do if you create those situations. And you could create those situations mentally too. I, that's fair and that's real. It's really good to really get other humans because in games, there's other humans. How do you teach basketball IQ? People define basketball IQ in so many different ways. I think for me, basketball IQ really happened in college when I, I played under Tobin Anderson. He was my coach at St. Thomas Aquinas. I won 102 games with him, went to an Elite Eight. He was insane coach. He was a Division One assistant before that. Then he went from St. Thomas Aquinas College to FDU, where he beat Purdue in the first round. He made it to round 32 with a 16 seed, which is insane. And then he went to Iona. He's currently coaching at Iona. This is his second year there. When it comes to IQ, he really taught me the different ways that you can use your brain to make situations easier for yourself. And I think that's what IQ is. I think IQ is essentially what are the different ways that you could use your brain to make it easier on your body? That is how I boil it down. And I think there's so many ways you could do that. I think you could watch film and have aha moments in film. I think you could play three on three a lot and have aha moments in three on three. What I do think though, is that there needs to be an intention for IQ. And I think that's what people lack. For example, if you play five on five, like at the park, and you have no intention on improving your IQ, sure, you'll improve over time, but if there's not a focused effort for some reason to improve how you're using your mind to make it easier for yourself, you're not gonna get a better IQ fast. But if you played five on five, say, and you weren't allowed to dribble, or if you played five on five and you were only allowed one dribble, or if there was other stipulations that manipulated the team aspect, the brain, the thinking aspect of the sport, I think 2K is great for IQ like underrated i think 2k really lets you zoom out and see the game for how it is and there's no physical limitation for the most part it's your thumbs it's all about how can you use what you have with your brain it's your brain making decisions playing video games is not an inviolable way to build iq do you think the players that struggle with with basketball iq and ask how do i get better with basketball iq do you think they actually seek out those options before reaching out I do think that there's a lot of times players ask questions that aren't, they don't know what they're trying to improve. They don't know what they need to improve and then they just boil it down to IQ and or they boil it down to something else. There's plenty of examples of this happening where they'll say, how do I improve my form? So you're asking me how to improve your form, but then I don't think you need to improve your form. I think it's not dissimilar with IQ. I think there's a lot of players that ask, oh, I, I need to improve my IQ no no you just need to have the intention of dominating every single time you catch the ball because that's how you're supposed to play the game regardless of what you see everybody that catches the ball they are playing in a way to kill even if they look like a pass first point guard they are playing in a way where that they need to go dominate and then they're playing off of that that is how it works i see it all the time but then off the ball your intention needs to be how are you making potential shots easier for yourself before you get those shots or how are you making potential shots easier for your teammates before they get those shots that is what iq is what are all the ways you could do that i think offensive rebounding 
is IQ. I think having IQ and having the mental fortitude to say, I am going to make 100% effort crash on every single offensive rebounding opportunity. I think that's IQ. That is using your brain and using your understanding of math to say, if I crash more times, I will get more offensive rebounds. You will have a higher likelihood of getting more offensive rebounds. If I sprint in transition and I am the first one down the court, every single time in offensive transition, not saying that you're not going for the defensive rebound, but if you are trying to win that race every single time, you will get more opportunities in offensive transition. That's IQ. Then that's using the mental and physical fortitude to back that IQ, right? I see this all the time. A lot of players, they think about quality over quantity. When, and I'm the biggest quantity guy. I'm saying six times a day post. I'm crazy. Quality over quantity in offensive half court, you will get better opportunities because you see a lot of players, they hop around the court. They do weird things off screens. They just run to the three-point line instead of actually understanding how the defense is reading a down screen, for example. But... The thing is, you need to reach a certain threshold of focus and energy in an action to actually yield something positive. If you don't, you're too easy to guard. This can be extrapolated so many different ways. There's so many different schemes. There's so many different things that you can think about. But at the end of the day, what it boils down to is if you are hard to guard without the ball and you are positioning yourself without the ball to be hard to guard, depending on the situation, you will be making you and your teammates better, period. How much of getting better at basketball is just intention? Like you're saying basketball IQ, if you're out there playing, like you get a little bit better at it, but intent, you're there. I do think it, it's everything because if I put a four plates on your back on a back squat, people will say, oh, the task is making you stronger, which is true, right? The task of squatting heavy will make you stronger. But there's a lot of people also that one, don't even get under the bar in the first place because they think strength training is bad. Two, they're under the bar, they don't load it because they're afraid to load it heavy. Three, it is heavy, but they don't go down all the way or they don't push to failure. They don't push themselves, right? So it's like you could be given the environment, you could be given the task, you could have somebody yelling at you, but at the end of the day, if you don't have it as a focus, it's not gonna work. The environment and the task, if you manipulate those things, they should be making it easier for you, methods to make it easier for you to focus. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. You can have the easiest environment, the easiest test and make them good. And this is what we talk about with good drills. Any drill can be good or bad, depending on how it is executed upon. If you take crawl start, crawl starts are a good drill for developing acceleration because it puts you in positions to use gravity in the best way possible to develop the mobility that you actually need for drives. And it just puts you in a position where you actually have to use your muscles in the positions that are appropriate for acceleration to get better at it. But there's so many people that, okay, I could give you that drill, but if you don't have the intention on moving fast, there's a lot of people that just step and walk it out. It happens all the time. So it's like, how are you driving that intention in somebody else? And if somebody really sees why it is important for them to, to, to solve that problem, they will solve the problem. This is why live play is important. This is why dribbling around a cone is not always the best thing. This is why you can't just dumb everything down because everything stems from something else. If you don't know why you're doing something, you're not gonna show up mentally to actually execute on it.